Okay, so yeah, so today's talk actually um is intro to shrine. So shrine is this uh this toolkit for Ruby toolkit for basically dealing with file uploads. Lah. So I'm not sure like how many other toolkits are out there, but this one I I I had to do a side project to to basically build a file upload feature and then and then I before before that before knowing about shrine all I know was like active storage and then mostly people are just talking about how using active storage to do deal, deal with file uploads. So then then with the conversation there were people who brought up like shrine shrine RB also and some people really swear by it so so I thought that give it a go. So today's talk is um basically is a very is very basic intro, I would say. Uh it's a summary of everything that I've learned digging through the shrine docs and trying trying to build my my, my basic feature. Lah. So the official docs is actually like quite comprehensive, but the problem is I, I found it very confusing when I was trying to read it to build my feature because um, because some, um, I guess the, the docs are, not every part of the doc is like updated to the latest one. So sometimes you have to fi fi uh, filter which are the like newer way and which are the older way of doing things. But although the, the basics are all still around, this, still the same. So the basic is what I'm gonna go through today. If you know the basics, I think it's very easy to reason about shrine ready. Then from then on, you can build however kind of complicated UX you want with, with regards to file upload. Yeah, so uh, the examples in this talk are mostly around, like are for general usage and also a bit of Ruby on Rails uh, example. So, but the, but the but because like I will go through some basics and then it's okay for general usage, right? So I think that whatever framework you're using, whatever um, Ruby applications that you are using, it should be okay. It should be relatable to a large extent. Um, so on top of like foundation of Shrine today, I will, I will not cover like how to configure your Amazon bucket, S3 bucket or Google Cloud Storage bucket. And of course, there are many, many file cloud, file hosting, storage hosting services out there, right? So this is also one of the things that I had to figure out very, like spend quite a lot of time figuring out how to configure like ACL, all this stuff, right? So, but then I will, I will leave it out for the talk today. And then I will also not cover like technical, complicated technical decisions required to make very uh, seamless file upload UX. So file upload can become very complicated. And if you talk to the more senior engineers or people who have deal with file upload, they will tell you like, oh, you should do this, you should do that. A lot of things you need to consider. So those are the things I I'm not gonna go through today. I see I've heard some, but because I'm, I also have not really uh, dive into it. So I don't think I'm in a good place to talk about them. Yeah, so, so let's start with Shrine. Just now I say it's a file attachment toolkit for Ruby application. And then when it comes to like what is file attachment, right? You might think that it's just uh it's just like file file upload, like maybe a file input, um form input. Then you just upload the file from the browser. And then where does it go after that? So this is like the this is where Shrine comes in. So Shrine makes it very easy to in integrate with like Amazon S3 or Google Cloud Storage or even just with your file system. It just gives a, it's a frame, it's a, the toolkit makes standardize everything, how you interact. And then you also make sure that your file go to the, the storage service that you need it to go to very simply if you set it up well. Okay. So let's like just, 
dig into the the technical stuff, how how to use it, and I'll explain things. Uh, there's different concepts along the way. So setting up shrine right is actually quite straightforward. Um, so of course. You install the gem. If you use gem file, use bundler, you can just include gem shrine. If you are not using like bundler, you maybe you might just write a write your own Ruby script. Then you can just gem install shrine on your on your uh, machine. Then then your script can just uh, require shine shrine. So in this example, because it's Rails, right? So naturally it starts from an initializer, but Again, it can be any Ruby script if you can require shrine from, from wherever it is. So the most basic thing that needs to be configured for shrine after you require it is actually configure, co configuring the, the storage. So in this in here, we can see that it actually shrine.storage takes in a hash. So there's two keys, hash and store, and both of them are assigned a file system. So so basically here, what, what we are saying, what is configured here is that when you upload a file, Shrine will save it into, like really write it out into a file on, on the machine, wherever it's hosting. So this is just an example. Here we have cache and store. So, so, for, so then what are the different storage systems that Shrine provide? Um, just now I, I showed you file system, right? So file system is also one of the 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 files the storage systems that came out of the box for Shrine. So there are three main ones came out come out of the box for from Shrine, which is S3. So of of course S3 use is used for Amazon S3, but it also can be used for compatible services like Min Min IO Digital Ocean Spaces. So basically the it's compatible because the API is the supports the API is the, the the shape of the API is the same. So then then that's why it's compatible. Then the other the other two is file system and memory. So then for people who are not familiar with hosting in general, of course, if you use third party file, file hosting services, right? Storage hosting services, right? Then is mostly for production. Like you only use uh, production, like you will start pay money, pay money and get a production, uh, a file hosting system for your production app. For then if you're, if you use the file system, then mostly should be using for development and test environment. Um, technically, yes, you can use it for production, but you must know what you're doing, right? Because if you use, like if you deploy your app using Kubernetes, right? You use Docker, maybe. Then, then you might have the many different ports and then the request routes to many different ports. And the file that is written is only, you will write to a single port only, right? Then if the request route to another port, then, then the, suddenly your file cannot be found. The user cannot get that file. So, or, or even you use Heroku, Heroku, if you deploy your Heroku app, you use file system, and then the file gets saved in the Heroku instance. Then when you deploy again, like Heroku wipes everything and redeploy your app, right? Then the file gone gone again, right? So, so it's technically like possible to use file system for production, but then you really must know what you're doing. Or if you have your own server, like really like hardware server, then maybe it's okay. So, so yeah, that's file system. And for memory, of course, their memory is for development and test environment. So these are the three main ones. So, so there are also third-party like uh storage systems that like they people built for that's that built for a shrine because later we'll go through shrine has this like plugin like architecture and stuff. So then there are there are like Google Cloud storage ones. There are actually there are many, many, many people built for many different like file hosting services. So this is like one good thing because like Shrine is Shrine is quite uh, mature already, and then most of the time if you have a you want to use some storage system, right? There should be a plugin already. Even if there there isn't building one, is also not, also not difficult. Okay, so so I'll just be going through the the basic four just now. So here you can here you can see that if you want to use the S three one, of course you need to uh require also the AWS SDK. 
so here you can see that uh, after you in input the AWS, install the AWS SDK in your, in a, in your machine or in your project, uh, you just need to require Shrine Storage S3. So this, like, because it's built in, it comes with the, comes with Shrine already. And then here you can see that cache and store uses Shrine Storage S3 and then some configuration. So, so more info on the configuration can be found on the website, but basically, uh, basic usage is like that. And then for file system, file system, because it's file system, right? You don't need to require anything special. We mostly use uh, Ruby's basic uh, out of the box, like file IO kind of libraries to, to deal with your, your files upload and all this stuff. So here you just use file system. And then the, la uh, the last one that is built out of the box is uh, memory. So here you just see memory.new, right? So behind the scenes, what it does is it, it creates a hash and then everything is dumped into the hash. Of course, then when, you're, when the memory um, objects get deleted, okay. get garbage collected, all this, right? Then it just all be gone also. So this is memory. And the last file system, uh, storage system that, that I have here is Google Cloud Storage. I think I'm, I'm, I'm doing, showing Google Cloud Storage because I, I use Google Cloud Storage for my side project. So then might as well, like, I just put in the code web, which I've uh, already figured out how to do it. So here, because Google Cloud Storage is the third party one, so you can see the, the gem name is called Shrine-Google Cloud Storage. So you also have need the Google Cloud Storage SDK. And then here, you need to include the Shrine Storage, Google Cloud Storage uh, files from, from the third party plugin and also to require the Google Cloud Storage uh, SDK. So this is uh, how Google Cloud Storage is configured. So basically you need to call conf configure first. And then after that, you use the Google Cloud Storage, Shrine Storage, right? It basically picks up the Google Cloud Storage configuration. So this is how uh, roughly how you configure your project to, if you want to use Google Cloud Storage. So, so, so just now was just like talking about storage system. And now if we, after we have configured our storage system already, so you don't need to care about where your, where your files are going anymore. Basically you configure that my backend for cache will be maybe file system and then for, for, for permanent storage is S3 and then all you need to do now is you just work with Shrine. You don't need to uh, deal with all the other all the SDKs anymore. So in so in Shrine, um, the core I would say like the core object is this Shrine attacher. So this Shrine attacher object is actually the class that you use to upload, download, uh, promote uh, your file from the from bucket to another bucket or you fetch metadata, get the URL of the file, because if your URL is like, because you if you upload your file to S3, right, then of course the, the file can can be like publicly accessible. Then you you might want to get the URL and then like give, give your user and then they can download the file or whatever. So it's also possible to get URL. So, um, so this Shrine Attacher is really the, the class for you to, to to, to do your one to do the wonders law to to upload download everything you need is this class okay so in shrine um there it always assumes two default bucket two default storage which is which is cache and store of course you can give it a different name so in this example in the last line you can if in the last two lines if you use cache and store you just do shrine dot dot new it automatically reads cache and store. But if you choose to like use another uh, uh, key, right, to, to, to represent your cache and store um, uh, storage, shrine storage, right, then you must pass in, tell, tell, tell the attacher class that uh, use which, which storage for, for cache and use which storage for store. So, so, so but, the, but back to the basic, it will always assume two, two storage system, one is for cache, one is for store. Then, then for in, in terms of file upload, mostly uh, temporary storage will be 
will be where like the file might be like uploaded, but then user might not um, have decided that this is the file they want, right? So for example, maybe your you have you have a your your user experience you have a a, a, a form and then maybe you 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 the user needs to go through like three forms. Um, then they submit and then finalize the whole 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 submission completion of their like maybe they sign up for something right they might upload the file in step one and then they go to step two and then go to step three is like finalize right but then the user have not like really submit at a point if the user drop off then the file will just throw away right you don't need because the user haven't finished like signing up so then even if you save the file the file is useless you you might just like want to throw it away so so you you can keep the file in cache and then when during re-renders re of the in step two and step three the user while while in that session while doing step two and step three he still knows like what are the, what is the file that he or she have uploaded and then at the point when they finally the step they finally submit the form then you promote the the form the the file into permanent storage and then you can assign it to that user maybe for example in inside the database so most i guess like most of the time like having cache and store is is having a cache storage and a permanent storage is useful uh in terms of like to save save cost and could delete and clear unwanted files um whenever you can okay so shrine at Azure is the object. Oh, sorry, I totally went through this already. So, so how to upload a file to to cache? So after you create a uh, create a attacher, right, a new attacher class, actually it's very easy to to upload to cache. Basically, you just call assign dot assign, and then you pass in the file. So this file can be any class, any object. That matches the Ruby I/O class, uh, the shape, the behavior of the Ruby I/O class. So like, like maybe just a normal Ruby basic Ruby file class, or a temp file, or string I/O, or for Rails you'll be Action Dispatch HTTP upload the file, and then there's a Shrine rec file, etc. etc. So, so here you can see you you call attacher dot assign, then you pass in the file, and then you can read the file like that was attached. From, from the attacher also, attacher.file, and you can see that here the storage is, is actually cached. So it, you call a sign, you will upload it to, to the cache, um, to, the, to, to the cache storage. So then, like, what if you don't want to upload into a stack cache storage? You don't have like a form redisplay kind of like flow. You immediately want it to go into permanent storage. Then you can just call, uh, instead of calling a sign, you call attach. So, if you call attach and you pass in a file, then it it uploads it to the permanent storage, which is the the the, the key store la, the store like shine storage. Okay. So then if you have like a flow, like kind you have if you have a flow where you want it to be being cache and then automatically do into store, right? You maybe you can maybe like a very simple most basic ways like okay first you upload it into cache then you attach a dot file and then you grab the file and then you upload into uh, attacher then you call dot attach and then upload into permanent storage but actually that's an easier way that shrine lets you do it is dot is this method called finalize so in this example uh you can see that first attacher dot assign so uploads it to the cache storage then we assign like previous file as a variable that points to the, the cache file then you call attacher.finalize, it will automatically promote it from the cache storage to the permanent storage. So, so like be it if um if your cache storage is file system, your your permanent storage is AWS, or your cache storage is AWS, your your permanent storage is Google Cloud, you don't really need to care. Uh Shrine will do it all for you. So you just call finalize, you'll move from one bucket into another bucket. Uh, wherever the bucket is. So one also one good thing here is that when you call when you check previous file dot exist right, it actually 
deletes the file from the cache storage. So this, if you have like a lot, a lot of file uploads every every other day, right? Then this can really save you a lot of money you know? because it automatically like cleans up the, the old file that you actually, if it's in permanent storage already, you, you got no use for it in the cache storage anymore. So, so this is uh, like one very easy way to promote and save some money, basically. So if you uh, have the file in permanent storage, then how do you delete it? So like maybe the user um, don't want that file anymore, right? Like maybe it's like a photo album upload, then upload the photo and then they want to delete the photo already. So here you can do this, you can call uh, destroy attach. So basically, um, you upload the file already. Sorry, I probably, I, I missed out like one, one line to show that, okay, upload the file and then you get the file, then you call it destroy attached. So, so here, this, this destroy attached is like a, like a safer method. So basically you only delete it if the file is in the permanent storage. So I, I've not like have to use this yet, but from the official guide, it just says that maybe that maybe you still need the temporary, the cache one in, for background job. Now you might have a background job that is running and then you don't want to like delete it if it's, it's still in cache, right? So this is like a safer one. But you, if you die, die want to just destroy the file, just delete it from your S3 or your Google Cloud storage, right? Then you can immediately just call destroy. It will, you, it doesn't have like this check if it's permanent storage. Yep. So, so this is like how you can easily delete a file. So the next thing is, um, then now, just now we talk about, okay, we have this attacher class that, that simplifies your interaction with, with whatever storage system in the back end, whether you attach, you, you uh, upload, download, read metadata, et cetera, right? So, so what we are dealing with, right, is this, this class got shrine uploaded file. So, so you call attach attacher.file, you will get this class, this object called in which the class is trying to upload the file. And then you can on this file you can check if it's attached or not. Uh if 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 it's a if in the cache storage, if it's in a permanent storage, it lets you pull the URL. So just now I said an example is that maybe in cache storage, but then you still want to like show the user in the first step what, what they uploaded and then before they confirm and submit the the file submit the form right so then you then you can get a url here and so but then there's a catch here is that if you have a url then then you, if you render to html then you you must make sure that your url is reachable by from the uh, user's browser so so maybe like if you use file system you you will probably have the file you, you expose a route or you just have the file inside the public folder or if you have a third-party storage system service, then you must make sure that the 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 your the 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 bucket the files inside the bucket is reachable by the general internet, right? So yeah, so that's like getting the URL. Then you can also like read uh metadata of the file, like for example the file name, file size, like what kind of mime type the file has. Maybe it's a PDF file, is a the zip file or, or uh, a JPEG file, PNG file, etc. So this is so so this is the artifact that we that using Shrine you always deal with. Uh. Okay. So um so the next thing is plugin. So uh just now I've covered a lot. I covered like configuring your storage, how to upload, download files, and how to, how to, um, how to, like what are the, what, what is the object that you always deal with, right? So, so those are probably like the very, very basic. If you run, write your own Ruby script, you probably can do your file upload very easily already. Okay, so, so, so actually Shrine has also a plugin system. And the, 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 what the plugin system lets you do, right? Actually, it tries to split things into, into modules, right? And here we call it plug, the shrine called it plug, plugins. Uh. 
which you can enable certain feature if you only you want, want, want to use it. So um, you might not want to like require load the entire shrine library into memory for like Ruby will always, we have to load it into memory before you can use it, right? So you might not want to load everything. You need want to like load part of it in. So this is like one, one uh, reason, like one good, good example of, uh, of, uh, of, of plugin. So uh, I'm gonna go through two basic plugins that most people, I think most people will use. Um, and then and then there is a whole bunch of other plugins that come out of the box with Shrine also in the Shrine's official like doc. But there are also many third party ones that, that you can check out. So basically there are a lot of plugins, uh, probably whatever you need to do, there is uh, a good chance that there's already a plugin for to do it. Lah. So the, the first one is actually the active record. So just now, just now, whatever we seen, it, it just feels like the just like Ruby law, plain Ruby, right? But then in in active record, uh it, there there is a there's this plugin that hooks into the active record like callbacks and stuff and make things like more like real C. The way you do things is just very the very real way of doing things. So so for the for active record in the initializer after you set up your storage, basically what you need to do is you need to do, write this line called shrine dot plugin and active record because it is out of the box with shrine, so you don't need to really require anything. Basically, you you call this method, it will set up a bunch of like stuff and then hook into the active record um lifecycle. Okay, so so there are, there are some things to know to to hook into active record is that. Basically, uh, you need a new column, a new DB column, and here it's called, I call it image data in the photos table. And then I have a photo class with photo model application record. And then here you must call include shrine attachment, and then you pass in the key. So you realize that here the key is image, and then therefore um, it, will in, it will infer the data in the column called image data. So this is the, a convention that you just follow. And shrine dot attachment is a uh, is just a module that provides a lot of helper methods that uh, to use. But so but the core is still like the attach attacher class, uh, the storage class and and the the shrine uploaded file object. Okay. So so after you include all this, all the setup is done ready you realize that everything is still like just the Rails way of doing things. So here maybe there's a photo form and then the image form view, uh, in file input field, and then you upload the file form. Uh, you, you submit the form and then it goes to the controller, right? And then basically you require the, the file itself and then you pass it into your photos.new and then you just dot save and then the file will be saved into permanent storage. Okay, so if you do dot, photos.new and then you pass in the, the file itself, right? It goes to cache storage, and then you dot save, it got, then you will be promoted to permanent storage. And then if you destroy the photo here, when we call photo.destroy, it actually destroys the photo, uh, that entire DB record, right? In the photos table, but you will also destroy the, photo that is uploaded to the S3. So, so here it's like pretty straightforward. It's just like the Rails way of doing uh, create a, a simple crack, okay? So, so the next one is actually this plugin called derivatives. And if you deal with a file upload, a lot of time you will need, uh, like most likely you will create thumbnails. So you, you, you have like one huge file and then you want to generate a small, medium, big. And then small, you will then there are, there are, there'll be places where you use the small photo. There'll be places you use the medium and the big photo or for optimizing like the performance of your website. So there is also a plugin called derivatives. And actually it uses this gem called image processing, which is based on image magic, which is what people mostly use to to do your your to do magic on your images, right? Like shrink and all the stuff. So so 
again, you do shrine.plugin derivatives, which then will uh like will load all the 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 code for the plugin. And then here is slightly a little bit more uh like complicated, I would say. Just need to do something more. So basically, um here this example is you create a new class image uploader that in that that uh, inherit like shrine and then then you do the configuration of that derivative inside that class so so what's the pros of this of doing this thing is that maybe you don't want to create a derivative from every single like file upload in 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 the entire uh, Ruby application because derivatives are like, very photo specific, right? That like, it, it might not work. It, it definitely will not work on like a PDF file or something like that. So then, then you, so here we create a new class, image uploader and input shrine. And then we configure the derivatives inside that only for the image uploader. So, so the, so the, the usage is still the same. So just now we do shrine attacher.new. Now you just do image uploader attacher.new because image uploader is also a shrine, shrine object, right? Shrine, yeah, it also inherits from shrine. So then it is in itself also has an attacher that you can reference from inside. And then you just do attach again. And then everything, the rest is still the same for uh as as with the active record, the examples in the active record plugin. And then when you call dot save like basically you save the file it will automatically generate the all the three sizes for you basically however many size you 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 declare just now lah. so so in this example if you do photo dot image you return to the original file but if you do photo dot image then you put pass in the key which you declare just now here is large and then you get like the the large file the basically the derivative file and then you Again, you can get URL size and run type. So just now I declare small, medium, large, right? So in total, there will be four, four files that gets uploaded to your storage. The original one, the small, the large, and the small, medium, and large. So you then here you can use whichever you you find more suitable for yourself, for your use case. Yeah. So there are actually a lot of extensions, a lot of default plugins that you can use already. In in shrine, uh, that 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 people have built from for shrine. So definitely, if you need to do file load, go and go and check it out. If you have like some problem, go and check out the the plugins. Maybe there's already a solution for you. So so what's next? Like okay, today all we cover is like the the core pieces of shrine, how to use shrine and all. But after knowing all these basics, right? Basically, you can think about then what is your what is your UX for your file upload, and then really just build it out, build 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 out your your the the seamless like file upload experience you have for your application. So, like for example, these days if you you see a file upload UX right online, it's mostly like maybe you will it's a drag and drop, and then you will have some JavaScript that uploads it. To the file storage first. Uh, uploads it to to your your storage system first, right? It doesn't even have a form upload to your to your Ruby on Rails app. The client side already generated a signed URL and then uploaded your client side. So all these fancy stuff. Um, that's like the the next step, law to 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 file upload. So so which is really uh up to whatever UX that you want. So yep, that is the end of the talk today, end of the intro to to this Shrine RB. So I hope that um now if you go to read the docs, everything will make a lot of sense. And then you can get started very easily. Yep. That's it. Any questions? Okay, there's only Okay, then that's it. Huh? I'm just thinking, right? Um, let's say you want to temporarily store two different files. So you have to create two, you have to initialize two separate 
strange object, is it? Uh, you mean two separate shrine attacher, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, you need to initiate two two shrine attachers. Uh, if you if you are only talking about the like, let's put aside all the active record stuff, right? Um, then you you need to do this two two different attacher law, mm -hmm. and each attacher is attached to one file. If you do attach file and then you do attach again, right? I've not tried it, but I believe it will overwrite the 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 previous one. So if you need two files, you need two attacher. So in a way, the machine at any time kind of oh, okay, so let's say if I attach a file and I don't, I don't do anything about it, it will stay in the it will stay in the like memory for forever or like how how does that work? No, so so you do you create an attacher already, and then you call attach right. Depending on what what you configure your storage to be, if you configure your storage to be S three right, the file immediately goes to S three. Oh. Okay. Then 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 because this reference is only in memory, if you don't save this reference in your DB or whatever right, and then you lose it, then you don't have a reference to the object in the S three bucket already. Oh okay. So, so then like the most basic use case, for example, you have a profile, like you have a table called like user, right? And then user have like a profile picture. Then you pro probably want to save that reference, basically the shrine uploaded file like reference into the database. And then you, uh, you, it will be a hash. Then after that, if you load it out, you can load it back into the shrine uploaded file. And then you will be able to fetch the file from the same storage backend again. Yeah. So you you have to uh save the reference though before you mm -hmm. throw it away. If not, then your 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 storage, like your S3, right, will will have a lot, a lot of files. And then you from your code, you can never like delete it. You have to manually go to S3 to, to the interface to delete it. But if I use assign, then it doesn't go to S3, right? No, assign goes to the assign goes to the cache storage, right? But the cache storage can be in memory, can S3 it can also. be S3 also. Oh, okay. It can be Google Cloud Storage. It can be anywhere. Yeah. Wait, wait. So so what I did was that uh, I have what I did was that. In for my production app, I have two storage. Both are Google Cloud storage. But then for my Google Cloud, that bucket for the cache, right? I set a rule to wipe it, to delete the file every 24 hours. So I don't need to worry like the, the cache bucket becomes like bloated up. Mm. So, but then it's also, but it's still very, it's still important to recognize that your cache storage is also a production storage somewhere. Mm -hmm. Just say like use as a use for a different purpose. Okay. Yeah. Um, good. Okay. Then I think we can uh, stop here. Okay.